sense of touch is unusual. I suppose I'm thinking generally about sensors, but the sense of touch, I think, is very particular in a number of ways, actually. But the way I'm thinking about right now, well, actually, two ways. No, I'm not just thinking about one. The, uh, the way I'm thinking about right now is that it seems to me that the sense of touch is the only one that's kind of self-reflexive or has, a, kind of, um, has a, a short circuit in it or the possibility of a short circuit or a re-entry loop or a feedback loop, something like that. Now, when I, I just do this in the camera so you can see what I'm doing. When I do this with my, with my fingers, particularly if I move them a little bit like that so I can keep the sensation going, I'm, uh, the wind's picking up. The, uh, I can, I can feel the act of feeling, if you like. I can feel me, the sensation in both the finger, the skin of my finger and the skin of my thumb. But then the sensation seems to be happening somewhere in the middle between that, which is unusual, really. Because I certainly can't see the act of seeing. I mean, I can look in a mirror. But uh, that's very different. I can, I, I'm just looking into to the reflection of my own eyes when I do that. It's not the same thing. And I can't um, hear my own, act, the act of my own hearing, or, um, or smell my nose. You know, those things can't happen. I taste my tongue. Um, but I can feel the act of feeling, kind of. Or at least I can create this little feedback loop in that. I know this is something that. Um, probably Drew Leder talks about, but it might be Merlot Ponty. He says he can't, uh, it is Drew Leder, I'm sure actually, he says we're kind of ecstatic or, um, or thrown out from our own bodies and our bodies recede because the, the um, I think he calls it recessive body actually, he says because the, uh, when we look at something, the act of looking doesn't seem to take place in the eye, it seems to happen on the surface of the thing we're looking at. So as I look at the leaf on this bush in front of me, um, the looking seems to be happening on the surface of that leaf and similarly when I'm listening to the cars on the bypass in the distance but I'm hearing I'm not hearing my ears hearing I'm hearing the cars on the bypass and similarly the rest of the stuff and what Drew Ladder talks about if I remember him rightly is that uh, the implication is that we're always kind of receding we're always kind of left behind in that rush of intention that rush of awareness and so our body recedes in the wake of that onward rush. But I don't think that is true with touch, actually, or at least sometimes it isn't. Or at least there is a possibility of avoiding that with touch. I mean, sure, if I put my hand on the surface of a tree, or, or if I was to reach down and feel the grass under my feet here, um, that feeling would be on the bark of the tree, or it would take place on the surface of the grass. But when I do this, it's taking place on the surface of the skin that's doing the feeling. You know, there's this little kind of cut off. I don't know. What, I don't know what you call it. Really. I'm thinking about it as a, as a re-entry loop. And what it's reminding me of, and I don't know if this is relevant or not, is for me at least. And I do this, and embarrassing me, embarrassing me often actually. When I do this, I, what I think about is, is is correlations between this and other kinds of re-entry loop. So I'm thinking about Douglas Hofstadter's book, I Am a Strange Loop, where he talks about the brain and about cognition being a series of re-entry loops about uh, about the self kind of being made present by being constantly the subject of its own uh, or the object of its own attention so it's like it's, it's, it's almost as if you can in, in your mind's eye well, that's a, yeah in this mind's eye the mind's eye itself is produced by this little loop of um, of self-reflexive awareness and I suppose I'm also thinking about Francisco Varela who talks about re-entry loops as the source of this kind of thing and um, yeah and that kind of autopoiesis system that he and, that he and Maturana talk about uh, where else am I thinking about with this yeah, I know there's some actual brain science to do with re-entry loops but I don't know to what significance they have probably none but when I do this this is slightly it's slightly embarrassing as I say when I do this what I do is I try to think myself into the gap between my fingers and my finger and thumb or whichever piece of skin I'm working with because it doesn't really because I can't be in two places at once and yet I can feel something and I can selectively attend to what's happening in my forefinger or selectively attend to what's happening in my thumb but that's actually quite tricky it's easier to um, to 
could kind of think into the gap actually and just kind of feel myself existing as the contact point between one thing and the other but in this case both things are myself so it's so I'm not emerging in the contact point between self and world I'm emerging in the contact point between myself and myself sort of so that's what I'm doing it's probably purely coincidental but I always find it interesting that, that many of the uh, kind of religious and spiritual traditions involve something like this. You know, so you get this kind of gesture in Buddhism, I think it's called a mudras. And in Christianity you get this, I can't do this because I need one hand to hold the camera, but in Christianity and, and on various prayer situations you put your hands together or you clasp your hands as if you're holding, um, as if you're holding God or you're holding spirituality or you're holding the transcendent in the invisible and uh, an infinitely small gap between one feeling and uh, and itself, you know, as if as well as, as well as you're kind of as well as allowing yourself to emerge in the gap between feeling and feeling, you're you're positing the existence of something else, a bit a, a kind of self writ large in that gap between feeling and feeling, in that little autopoetic loop. I'm not sure if that makes any sense actually. <laughs> 